So one problem, a vector problem I wanted to try today is this one. So I've got a post and we're going to have a wire connected to that post coming off at 600 pounds of tension. And I put that wire at a height of 30 feet. Now there's going to be guy wires. And actually, I'm, not, I'm going to take that. I actually want to look at some of this. So the guy wires we're going to put on here, we're going to look at two cases. We're going to have this one that comes off like that. So that's 30 feet up. And let's say our maximum distance we can get away because of right-of-ways. Let's say that maximum distance we're going to put at 18 feet. The type of anchor we're using, let's say we have a minimum of a six foot difference. So the second anchor we're going to put has to be at 12 feet. That is the closest we can get to that first anchor. So now we're going to look at two possibilities here. So the first part of each of them looks the same. The two possibilities are going to be for that second guy wire. Is it going to go from here up to the top? Or is it going to go from here and it's going to go at the same angle? is the previous wire and connect lower on the pole. I want to look at the maximum. Which one provides more hold? And let's say that the maximum tension per cable is a thousand pounds. <clears throat> <clears throat> so let's look at what is this first situation here. We have to find, what we're really finding is the horizontal component of each one. So we have that first one, the, the original cable, which is going to be the same for both. Let's figure that out. The angle, which is going to be this angle here, we're going to use an angle of deflection, is going to be found because we had 30 feet and 18 feet. That's going to be just an inverse tangent of what numbers? 30 over 18, opposite over adjacent. Give us 59.04 degrees. So that means that horizontal component of that vector right here is going to be 59.04 times, or sorry, the cosine of 59.04 times that thousand pound max capacity. <clears throat> so, cosine of times a thousand. 514.5. So, our first component there is 514.5. So both of these poles get 514.5 pounds of force off of that first uh, blue guy wire. Now let's look at the different setups for the brown guy wire. Let's do this one over here first because we're already kind of set up to do it. That's 1,000 pounds. It is at the same angle, 59.04. That component would be 514.5 still, because it's still the same angle, right? The problem is it's not at the top of the pole. It's down here. So the amount that that's able to exert up here is going to be larger. 
marginalized. We need to find this height here. So for that triangle, this is 12 feet, this is that 59.04 degrees, that side is gonna be found, tangent of 59.04 is gonna equal that side over 12. So tangent of 59.04 degrees times 12 divided by one is 20 feet. So that's 20 feet up. So the actual component of that force that comes up here is going to be that 514 times 20 over, what's the height all the way up here? 30. <clears throat> so 343 pounds is really what gets applied up here. So that second guy layer is able to supply 343 pounds of support. Does that make sense? <clears throat> and I'm asked, well, why is it so much, why is it less because it's down the pole? Think of, the, think of it this way. If you're going to lift a wheelbarrow, if you lift way out on the end of the handle, it's not that heavy to lift. But if you lift way up by the tub, it's a lot heavier. It's leverage. So this is closer to the ground. It takes a lot more force. The further you are away from the ground, the less force it takes. Now let's look at this one over here, this green, this uh, brown one. That triangle has 12 feet here and 30 feet here. So we have to find that angle right there. How are we going to find it? <clears throat> of... Inverse tangent of 30 over 12. Very good. Sixty-eight point two degrees. So then that horizontal component, this is still a thousand pound max tangent. That horizontal component is a thousand times the cosine. <clears throat> of 68.2 degrees. Three seventy one point three nine. So even though it's at a steeper angle, having this guy layer attached all the way up to the top, it's still slightly more beneficial than running at a shallower angle part way down. Does that make sense? Now, an interesting problem would find the balance point at what height up here could I attach this one where it gives us the same force? And one anchor, I've seen that as well. That's if your ground anchor, there's there's a limiting characteristics. One is your ground anchor. If your ground anchor, if you have the right soil, because you do have to do soil test, ground anchor, sand versus clay versus salt, very, very different. Um, <clears throat> if your ground anchor is stable, you can attach more than one guy layer or guy layer. The other limiting factor, of course, is the guy layer itself, and then the third one is the post. So if you're mount on the post, those mounts on the post can only take so much force, or they risk cracking the post or breaking the mount. So if the mount on the post is your limiting factor, then you have multiple mounts on the post going to one anchor in the ground. Or you can have it the other way around, of uh, one mount on the post going to multiple anchors in the ground. It all depends on the post. A wooden post, there is often times where it's the, the mount on the post that is the, the limiting factor. So you have to have several mounts on the same post. And with wood, um, you can't have those mounts have to be so far apart on the post. If they're more than if they're less than a certain distance apart, then the grains in the wood can split. 
So there, there is a minimum distances. I don't know those minimum distances, but I, I know they exist of how far apart they have to be if they're going in the same direction. <clears throat> those cables. There's a lot of different processes. You ever done any fencing? Oh, with the ratchet tighteners? You ever seen a, you've never seen a fence, uh, a wire stretcher? This is kind of the primitive way of doing it, but a wire stretcher is a device Let's say you've got your post here. You'll, uh, come on. You'll have a loop of wire around the post that's twisted together to attach everything to. Probably have your insulator there or whatever. Then your wire runs along here. You'll have to hold as tight as you can by hand. Then a wire stretcher is a device that will hooks around the post and it comes out here and it has something that'll actually uh, bind in the wire. Usually it's just like a, a twist to bind the wire like that. Barbed wire, of course the barbs won't slide through it. With even with a smooth wire, you usually have like a little bit of um, that can be dangerous. But it twists and then it's like uh, one of the old uh, car pump jacks, the, the empty jack. You just jack the handle and it it pulls this towards the pole. It pulls it tighter and tighter when that wire is tight enough. You uh, loop it around and do whatever you're gonna do to connect it and then release that. Of course, you'll lose a little bit you'll lose a little bit of tension once you release them. Well, for fencing, they don't, but then the ones, the primitive ones for the guide wires, there's actually a dial on there, almost like a trip wrench. That dial is telling you what sort of force is on it. And they have like little cheat charts that they would do of, <clears throat> okay, so the cable is this long. Um, there's, there's a certain distance between the tightener and the ground anchor. So you run that tightener, let's say you need it to be at, you need it to be at 640 pounds. And you have, Here's your post. Let's say you have uh, 30 feet of cable here. Your tightener attaches there and it's, you know, four feet to the anchor or whatever. So there's a formula that says, okay, you have to add a 30 to four split. And you have to add 12%. So you add 12% to this. You're going to tension it to 717 pounds. So this this part's tension. This part's pretty loose. You loop the cable through the anchor. You put all your clamps open. You pull down the anchor. You put your clamps, down, your clamps on it. Then you release that tensioner. So then this part that's not tight is going to get stretched back out, and that should reduce it down to that. Now to be honest, once it comes out like that, it's very like it. You can put it back in place and have it run on it. Always going to be a little bit of that back. That's kind of how it's done. And there's formulas that tell you the distances and how much you're going to lose in tension, what percentage you're going to lose in tension. Does that make sense? And they have equipment that's a lot more uh, advanced now. Um, I've seen, I don't know if they have them in this area, but I've seen some where you just, you, you hook up the tensioner and into a control panel you actually put, it's actually right on a truck. Um, it's a truck that's kind of shaped like this. <clears throat> so you just back the truck up over it. The tensioner is right in the truck, you back the truck up over the anchor, so the anchor's sitting right in here. And the tent, you know, so the, the truck is, the whole thing is a tensioner. Hook the cables into it. And you just punch it right and You punch your links. What's that? Um, so the, the uh, you program into it what your links are and what tension you want. And it actually takes care of 
I mean, it actually will even bind the cables themselves for you. Like I said, I don't know if they ha use them in this area or not. I've seen them down in the southern areas. Never seen one? <clears throat> okay. Any questions on that? That's kind of an application of your vectors and how everything can work. So next, I want to move on to a, a useful top or useful tool. This is one that's even more useful. How's that? Anyway, so Bose notation. Bose notation is a tool used in vector analysis. When you have more than one support on a single load, so we have a load. Let's say it's six particles. And just for ease here, I'm going to draw this in as being supported from a beam. It doesn't necessarily have to be supported from a single beam. It could be suspended between two posts or however. The angles I'm going to give you are between 100 and 120 degrees. This one here, I'm going to put in as. Now, because of parallel lines, I could also draw this line across the horizontal at that intersection. This would be 60, this would be 40. Of course, 90 is 90. That leaves this angle here 80 degrees. <clears throat> what we did before for analyzing these is do components. And we did a system of equations. If I let this vector be force on that vector be A, force on this vector be B, and put in my load, let's say this load is simply, no, I can change them all this time. Let's say this load is 800 pounds. <clears throat> we would have horizontal forces would be the horizontal component of vector A here, which is just gonna be A times the cosine of 60 degrees. And the horizontal component of vector B here, now that goes to the left here with the negative force, so that's minus B times the cosine of 40 degrees. Those are the only two horizontal forces. They have to add up to zero. Now I'm gonna put in Cosine of 60, which is 1.5. So that's 0.5a minus the cosine of 40, which is 0.766b, and that has to add up to zero. For the vertical forces, well, we have that vertical component, which is A times the sine of 60, we have this vertical component all the way up, so that's still positive. That's B times the sine of 40. 800 is going down, so that is a negative 800. That has to add up to zero. So sine of 60 is 0.866 times A. Sine of 40, 0.643 times B. I'm going to add 800 pounds to both sides, so it's going to equal 800 instead of equal zero. So what I have there is a system of equations. With those two equations that I have to solve. <coughs> What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to divide this one by 0.5. When we did systems of equations last semester, we looked at multiplying those equations to figure out one of the coefficients the same. Well, anything we can multiply, we can also divide. I'm going to divide by 0.5. 0.5 times 
0.5a divided by 0.5 is just 1a. Negative 0.766b is a negative 1.532b. And 0 divided by 0.5 is still 0. What do you think I'm going to divide this equation by? A negative 0.866. So this becomes a negative A. This will be minus 0.643 divided by 0.866. That will be a negative 0.742B. And then 800 divided by 0 0.866. 923.79. Adding my columns, the A's cancel out. This is a negative. Come on here, 2.274B equals 923.79, that should be a negative. So 923.79 divided by 2.4, we get that B is 2.4 pounds. A, well I can go back up to one of these formulas here, if I add the 1.532B, both sides A equals 1.532B. So I just going to multiply by 1.532B. A is 6.6. So there's A and B. Well, that was a lot of work. But I wanted to show you that so you can appreciate how much Bose notation saves us. Bose notation tells us every force has two qualities, a magnitude and a direction. This is familiar, that's every vector has two qualities, right? It's size and it's direction. One of the vectors in the problem has to be something we know both of those for. Well, there's one that we know both for, that's the load. The load is 800 pounds straight down. So we're gonna draw it straight down, 800 pounds. From that known vector, we rotate around an intersection. There's an intersection of those vectors. Counter clockwise. So we go this way, we hit vector A. A goes in this direction at an angle here of 60 degrees. We don't know its magnitude. Keeping going counterclockwise, we run into vector B. Vector B goes this direction at an angle of, I think, 40 degrees is the right angle. So now from those, we can fill in. What's this angle here? 30 degrees. What's this angle up here? 50 degrees. Guess what? This angle has to be 100 degrees. Come on. So 800 pounds over the sine of 100 degrees has to equal A over the sine of 50 degrees. We can find A. Six twenty two point two nine. We had six twenty two point two six before. I remember a lot of round off there. <laughs> and then for B, we have eight hundred over the sine of one hundred equals B over the sine of thirty degrees. This is 
Again, you can see that it's the same pretty much that we have in the same notation. Both notation is just a lot less work. Does that make sense? So I'm guessing maybe another example or two might be in order. Let's put a 1200 pound load. I'm gonna call this here 25 degrees and this here 70 degrees. So down here I have to find some angles. What's this angle? 25 with this one. 70 with this one. One oh five. That's a horizontal at the straight line, so I have to add up 180. Oops, you're right, it's 85, not 75. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so it's 85 degrees. So in Bull's notation, what do we start with? <clears throat> 1,200 straight down, good. Then what? Let's get back there. <clears throat> this one goes off in this direction. Twenty-five degrees here, or fifty, sixty-five degrees there. That's vector. I'll call that A and B. So that's gonna be A, and B goes this way. This angle is 70, so this angle is 20, and this angle is 95. So let's tell me how to find vector A. The only force we know is 1,200. Over sine of 95 degrees equals A over sine 20. We're just going to call it 412. Then what? Twelve hundred over the sine of ninety five degrees equals B over the sine of sixty five. Cross multiply and divide. Twelve hundred times four sixty five divided by sine of ninety. How is it 19? Like 75. <clears throat> what do you think? I wasn't, but maybe I was. Any questions on that one? It doesn't have to be just a hanging thing like that. It, it, it does have to be one that's only three pieces. I guess it could be a fourth piece, but that's a little trickier. It could be supported from below. Let's say this load is 1,500 pounds. We'll put this angle here at 60 degrees, this one at 75 degrees. Now there's gonna be some arrows here. This one 
is down. These are both going up, aren't they? If I run this across here, this is 75. This is 60. I am still going to start out with my known vector, 1,500 pounds going straight down. But as I go counterclockwise, the next one I hit is this one, which goes this way. That is, I'll call that one A, B. That's vector A. This angle here is 75. So this is the important one. That's actually 15. Then we have B, which is going this way. This angle here would be 60. So this one is 30, which makes this one 135. So 1,500 over the sine of 135 equals A over the sine of 30. <clears throat> A is 1,000.66. For B, so we still have 1,500 over the sine of 135 equals B over the sine of 15. It makes sense. This one's much steeper, so it makes sense that that's going to be holding more of the weight. This one being a little shallower is going to take a lot less. Any questions? It's really a handy little tool. I mean, refer back to all the work to solve this system of equations here compared to just drawing that triangle and using a lot of signs. Homework, you got a worksheet I'm going to hand to you, so I'll grab that for you. 